In 2019, I visited the museum to talk about my life of music making and to play some songs from my album, Texas. Here's a clip of that program from the museum's archive. I'll be back at the museum soon for the big night, a much needed fundraiser in support of this house that holds the music. It's a once in a lifetime celebration of country music and the museum's treasure. Head to the museum's YouTube channel in the copy below and be sure to ring the bell, mark your calendars, and please help support this very special place by tuning in and donating. You left Texas early on, you, mm -hmm. you fled. Why do I keep writing about it so much? Yeah. Yeah. What's your obsession with place. this play? Why do you keep I, going woo every time I somebody think says Texas? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's it's like Hank DeVito had this art teacher, and he used to say, "It takes two people to paint a painting, one to paint it, and another one to shoot him when he's through." <laughs> so you know, I you know, surely I've told everything I have to say about Texas, about my upbringing. Um, the Houston Kid, my memoir, this this record, and parts of Close Ties. Yeah, I've done it. You know, I think if I go any further with it, I need to be shot. <laughs> I think I I really do think I've said all I have to say on that subject. I hope I did. I hope I have. Uh, what do you think is different from what you're saying about Texas on this record from what other people have said about Texas? I have no idea. I do know that I, w I was most interested in, in um, trying to, to somehow conjure up a, something of a landscape painting, if I could, you know, with the songs. And like a couple of songs, like Brown and Root, which is a big construction company that got bought out by Halliburton. I wrote that song in 1976. Nobody ever says woo for Halliburton. No. <laughs> Well, a lot of people who worked for them said woo. Yeah. You know, my brother-in-law worked for him, and then they let him go, and he, he said something else about them. Yeah. <laughs> Steve had, had performed uh, Brown and Root on his very first tour, Steve Earle. So we had talked about, well, we should record that song together, and so that was a 25-year conversation. And we finally wound up in the same studio over at Ray Kennedy's studio, and so, okay, well, there's that. And then I'd written a song called 56 Fury, and, and for some years I'd been having an off and on conversation with Billy Gibbons, trying to, to because we grew up in Houston around the same time, I really, you know, wanted to see if there was some way we could get something going. And I finally wrote a song that I thought would work and sent it to Billy, and he agreed that it worked, you know, right in his groove, you know. So there's two. And I actually had uh, a recording, Lyle Lovett and I had done a recording a few years back that I had in the can, and I said, well, okay, I got that. And from there, and then I got a, a message from out in California that Ringo Starr was available to record if I wanted to, like, Oh, I have to think about that. Yeah. <laughs> so there's another collaboration, you know. And so I said, okay, I'm, I'm starting to, okay, you know, what is this that's happening? And that's when Ray, Ray Kennedy and I started talking about what are we making here? What is this happening? Ray Kennedy, the great producer. Great producer and a lovely human being. And... Um, so we started talking about what is the narrative, and then Billy Gibbons, we were talking about all the music that we love, regional music in Houston when we were growing up. There was so much regional music that was so great. We were talking about it, and I said, well, you know, well, all these songs and what I'm doing is really Texas-centric. And he said, there's your title for your album. I said, Texas-centric, huh. okay, sounds pretty good. But the, I said that out loud a few times and said it to Ray, and it just, I said, no, it's not Texas-centric, it's Texas. And <laughs> <laughs> you can let it go now.
I'm trying to wean myself off it, and you're encouraging me. <laughs> so, you know, it, we, then we started to think about, ah, oh, you know, let's, this is where this is going. And from that point on, we, we started bringing in more songs like Flatland Hillbillies is something I'd written with Mary Carr. And I said, oh, well, you know, this is exactly, you know, about where I came from and where Mary came from. And uh, from there on, it just started, you know, it just kept going. And it became Texas. And trust me, I knew that if I put out an album called Texas, I was going to get invited to go play in Texas. <laughs> and, you know, and if people would be happy to see me. And, you know, we've been down there for the, you know, the last month playing. And it was like, boy, yeah. It's exactly like I thought, you know. I grew up there. You know, Texas was, a, uh, was its own country at one time. And it became a state, you know, and it may yet go back to being its own country. <laughs> so... I've gotten in good with them.